My name is Dr. Jonathan Miner, and uh, today I'd like to talk a little bit about our progress in seeking a cure for a disease called retinal vasculopathy with cerebral leukoencephalopathy, or RVCL. This is a disease that also has other names, including CRV, Hearns, and others. So the goal today is to tell you a little bit about some of the work we've been doing with a gene therapy effort using a technique called CRISPR. First of all, I want to start by saying thank you to everyone who is supporting our efforts to find a cure for RBCL. This includes the Clayco Foundation and also numerous families and friends of patients with RBCL you are making a huge difference in our effort. You have helped us speed things up. And uh, additionally, uh, Penn, University of Pennsylvania, here in Philadelphia, has made a tremendous contribution to accelerating our efforts. Thank you. Uh, patients have also played a role in helping to raise awareness for RVCL and a new center for autoimmunity here at Penn, the Colton Center for Autoimmunity is now providing additional financial support to accelerate our efforts. I'm very grateful to everyone for this. If you'd like to follow regular updates about our progress, you can visit our website uh, with the URL here, or you can follow us on Twitter. Thanks to the support of Clayco Foundation and also uh, families and friends and other donors, um, and in including patients with RVCL, we have been able to assemble an incredible team of physicians, scientists, laboratory research specialists and technicians, genetic counselors, uh, registered nurses, and others who are all playing vital roles in accelerating our work. Many of these individuals are donating their time. And I think that's important uh, for you to know. There are patients with RVCL all around the world. And for anyone who's not familiar with this disease, it's a, an inherited disease. It's a genetic disease. And what happens in RVCL is the patients are typically healthy until uh, around age 40 to 50. Sometimes there's earlier onset, sometimes a little later onset. And then the patients start to develop disease that affects the brain and the eye and other organs as well, including the kidney and the liver. And this leads to premature death in 100% of cases. And it also leads to disability, to blindness, to cognitive impairment, to kidney disease and liver disease. And there's currently no treatment for this disease, although we are conducting a clinical trial uh, with a medicine called crizanlizumab. But we know that we are going to need to find better and more effective therapies in order to slow down this disease and to cure it. First, I want to talk to you a little bit more about the human genome, because understanding the human genome is especially important for the discussion I'm going to present today and the progress report that I'm going to give. So the human genome includes 23 chromosomes, 23 pairs of chromosomes. And uh, I'm sure that most of you already know that uh, there are base pairs in the chromosomes. And, and these bases are A, T, C, and G. And there are about 3 billion bases in the human genome, 20,000 genes. And then there's also the majority of DNA, which does not encode any, uh, any gene. So uh, the sequence is incredibly long. In fact, if, if one were to uh, enlarge it so that it was the width of a spiral, staircase, it would extend all the way to the moon. That gives you a sense of, and, and I'm talking about the, 
the DNA in a single cell. So uh, it's an incredible number of base pairs, 3 billion bases. The TREX1 gene is the code for the TREX1 protein. So DNA is essentially a blueprint for proteins and proteins are the machinery that make us work. So whatever is written in the code determines the structure and function of the protein. And if the code, if the DNA code is changed, the protein structure changes. And this is how mutations in DNA can lead to disease due to a, an abnormal protein. The mutations in the TREX1 gene result in an abnormal, a shortened TREX1 protein. And all of the mutations that cause RBCL are in the TREX1 gene in this specific region of the TREX1 gene. And the result is an aberrant TREX1 protein. So TREX1 is an enzyme that is normally anchored into a membrane inside the cell. And there are two copies of every gene, one, one from mom, one from dad. And in RVCL, one copy of TREX1 has a mutation. And that mutation truncates the protein prematurely before this anchor in the membrane. And so what that means is that in RBCL, there is one copy of TREX1 that is anchored in the membrane and another copy of TREX1 that is floating free in the cell and causing damage and disease. Because we know the genetic cause of disease, uh, we know what gene needs to be targeted therapeutically and we know what protein needs to be targeted therapeutically. And so our position is that this disease should be treatable or curable by properly targeting the TREX1 gene and or protein. So how can we fix the TREX1 protein? Well, one of the approaches that we're using is a gene therapy approach. So this is an actual sequence from the TREX1 gene. You can see A's, T's, C's, and G's. It's a very small segment of the TREX1 gene. And uh, you might wonder, well, how does this code, these four different letters, how, how does this lead to production of a specific protein? Well, the code is read in threes and in, in, in triplets. And so we call these codons. Each, each triplet is a codon. And each triplet is the code for a protein segment or a component called an amino acid. And so you can see that these three bases encode this part of the protein and these three bases encode this part of the protein, it creates a chain. And that chain of uh, what are known as amino acids uh, are the components of a protein. And so if you alter the A's, T's, C's, and G's here, the triplet code, you can alter the protein. And so what happens in, um, so, the normal TREX1 protein, uh, when you have a certain chain of amino acids, uh, is a properly folded protein that is anchored in the membrane. So what goes wrong in RBCL? Well, in RBCL, there, there is a variety of mutations, but one of the mutations that occurs is an insertion of a letter right here, an extra G. And you can see that that extra G shifts the triplet code by one. So what is the consequence of that extra G? Well, you start, you make a mutant protein. The first amino acids are all normal because the code is not changed, but starting where that extra letter is inserted, you insert a different amino acid into the protein chain and another distinct amino acid into the protein chain and another. And finally, what's called a stop a premature stop, and that premature stop leads to a truncated protein. That shortened protein is what causes disease. So when you think about this, there are 3 billion bases in the genome and one 
space is responsible for this devastating disease. So how can we find that one base and fix it? Well, there's a technique known as CRISPR. And the way CRISPR works is there's something called a guide RNA that leads an enzyme toward the TREX1 gene, and not just to the gene, but to the specific site in the gene that we want to target. And CRISPR will typically break the DNA strand, and then there's a random repair. Can this be used therapeutically? Well, it already has. Uh, just last year in the New England Journal of Medicine, uh, there, uh, there was a report of CRISPR-Cas9 in vivo editing for a disease called amyloidosis, a specific type of amyloidosis. They were able to introduce CRISPR uh, into the liver of these patients, and this was to remove a particular gene. Uh, and uh, this successfully, uh, first of all, was tolerated with mild side effects and uh, was successful. So larger trials are needed, but there's already proof that this can be done in humans. Uh, and then this is just a diagram illustrating how the delivery into the cell uh, was performed. Uh, and additional details from that New England Journal of Medicine paper. So what about genome editing for RBCL? Well, it's a little bit different. We don't, want to, we don't want any kind of random repair because a random repair would leave us with another truncated protein or an aberrant protein. We want to fully repair uh, the TREX1 gene and fully repair the TREX1 protein. And so we had to use a different kind of CRISPR and we did it. We identified the target base for removal or the target nucleotide and developed a method and technique based on work that has been done uh, by others for different genes. Uh, but uh, we tested a wide variety of guides and we found guides that effectively target this area and result in a fully corrected TREX1 sequence. So uh, essentially, we were able to remove the extra base and instead of having the truncated protein, we were able to fully correct it. So of the edited bases, 94% were correct, or of the, of the edited sequences, 94% were correct with one of the guides, 91% with another. There were a few off-target effects, um, but it was low level uh, in, that, in that region. And, um, but I think one of the key points that I don't want to be lost here is that this was done in cultured cells growing in a dish in the lab. And so there's still a lot left to do before we're gonna be ready to do this for patients. Um, the people who did this work include, so Nilufar Rahimova and Sabacha Padar working on RVC on the lab. Sabacha did a lot of the work preparing this. And then Joe Hawley was recruited from a gene therapy company in Oxford, United Kingdom. Uh, Joe Hawley joined our lab specifically to carry out this work. And this would not have been possible without uh, the support of donors. There is a lot more to do. This is a multi-year process. We are not finished yet. We have a great team and amazing collaborators and we've had tremendous support from donors and from Penn. This is helping us move things forward quickly. We need your support to be able to move as fast as possible. If you want to, if, if you, are a patient or family affected by RVCL, you wanna contact us for any reason, uh, you should contact Hillary Boos, who's my nurse navigator here at Penn. You can also email me and Hillary and Dr. Ree. We all work together. We have a shared email, rvcl at penmedicine.upenn.edu. I can also be emailed directly. And now we have an RVCL phone line at 24 seven. As I have become increasingly busy, it has been really important to have 
the support of Hillary Booth and others. So I want people to feel like they can reach out directly to her if they need help. Uh, any patient with RVCL were available to help. Thank you for your support. Uh, please feel free to reach out with questions. We want people to know that we're here to help them. And, you know, I, and I know all of us on our team are deeply affected by the suffering caused by RVCL. We don't want to see patients suffering and dying anymore. We believe that this disease can be cured and we are completely dedicated to this work. Everything that is donated to us is used for RVCL research. We are meticulous about this. And so you can have confidence that we are doing the right thing with uh, the donated money. Thank you.